All right, we are on Pittsburgh Sports Live. This is John Krasinski with Matt Popchuk and Jordan Smith. We've got the we've got the crew tonight because man, that was an exciting finish. The Pittsburgh Riverhounds came from behind, two goals in the second half. First coming from Russell Cicerone, an assist from the hometown kid. He he gets transferred back to Pittsburgh this week, and he gets an assist. Robbie Mertz, in I believe in the seventy fifth or seventy fourth minute. And then, of course, in stoppage time, it's 1-1. One, one. Shane Wonderboy Wheat uh, just comes through with a wonder goal, a wonder strike in essentially the dying moment. So we've, we haven't seen a goal like that this year in the dying moments uh, on either side and see the Riverhounds with, with any meaning uh, and the Riverhounds to come to, 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 to get the full three points on the road. Very exciting match. Uh, Matt, since you're with us uh just take us through maybe the emotional side of it i know how you know the emotional side of seeing the ups and downs of a match like that well john as i was telling you a moment ago uh the match that we are talking about uh you me and jordan at present is very different from the match that with five minutes left uh to play i thought i would be sitting here talking with you about i fully expected to come on and be talking about how well, you don't feel as good about a 1-1 draw this time as you do last week, given the caliber opponent, given the expectation, given the form of the team coming in. But hey, at least you avert a disaster. At least you get a result. And it, 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 it's so ironic that um, a, a member of the much maligned part of the team, but part of the team that had really struggled, uh, especially in, in that big this year the defense uh shane wheat uh had had stretches where in my mind he light bulb really seems to have gone on for him and he throws something on goal that you know i mean like it sort of happens in slow motion this little chip shot you know and he perfectly placed ball but for me, for my money, John, the best part of the very end of that match was seeing the look on the face of Robbie Mertz. I mean, when you see the way he celebrated that winning goal, pure flippin' joy on that guy's face. And this is a guy in Mertz who I, I was reading some of the stuff he had said on social media when news broke that he was coming back to Pittsburgh. And, you know, you know, this is a guy who had hopes, you know, he had been working to, to get a shot at MLS, maybe get a shot at that next level one day. You're with an MLS farm club, basically. It doesn't work out. There's, I mean, there's some professional disappointment there. Let's not kid ourselves. I mean, this was, I'm he was thrilled to death to come back to Pittsburgh, you know, his hometown, a team that he knows, I'm sure. But I'm sure there was also that, you know, that feeling of disappointed expectations. And to see, you know, the, the, great player this uh grinning from ear to ear at the end of that match uh y you feel good for robbie and uh, you certainly hope however the rest of the season plays out that um that this is the start of uh a newer uh, better maybe loftier chapter in his own individual soccer story absolutely robbie mertz and not only that comes back and he, it's not like he came back because, you know, he was just kind of meddling with Atlanta United too. He had taken a leadership role with that squad. It essentially wore the captain's armband for really much parts of last season and this season and was on a roll. I mean, he had three goals and five assists in his last 10 games and comes in at the beginning of the second half. And, and you kind of had a feeling with the way Bob Lilly, the Hounds head coach, kind of works his lineups and stuff guy coming in this week in training probably not going to get to start but he comes in right up fresh in the second half and Jordan Robbie Mertz uh, I think he gave them some energy off the bench in the second half along with Russell Cicerone and they both delivered uh, it right away to get the equalizer yeah uh, one thing I, I noticed immediately with Robbie that I miss so much is how fast he sprints with the ball um, I mean, obviously our midfield is very composed, very good on the ball, but Robbie by far more than all of them can just dribble on the ball quickly, like Lionel Messi, how Lionel Messi does. Um, 
obviously no one can do it like Messi can, but right. Mertz in the USL, he is, he's very good at that. Um, so it was happy to see that. Um, as well, uh, Cicerone, uh, I, you, your tweets, John, how you mentioned eight different subs have come on and scored. Uh, Cicerone getting his ninth of the season. Um, he was another guy, didn't get the start, but then he comes right in and just, just brings all that energy like he does. Um, the broadcaster, he stated that uh, he jumped up like a salmon in the river and just popped his head up there and just pounded one in. Um, and Shane Weed, who we've recently seen, started a shoot from distance, playing that right center back or right back. All of a sudden, you know, he, he had one earlier in the game, too, from distance. And, uh, yeah, he scores one. Um, and, and what's funny, too, is uh, it looked like Kenny Fords was going to be subbed out. And, but Alex Dixon was cramping up, so they decided right. to sub him out. And Kenny Forbes ends up getting the game-winning assist. So, yeah, just tons of emotion in this game, back and forth. Uh, but finally, the Riverhounds come from behind, being down one nothing, and they find a way to win. They not only find a way to win, but it's, you know, one of those kind of gut-check things. Like, you're, if, even if they come away with a draw, I think a lot of people are going to be, like, Oh man, you know, you, yeah, you get to draw in New Mexico to a lot of unfavorable conditions. Just come to Hartford. You got to get those three points. If you you're thinking about Tampa, you're thinking about Louisville. You got to get those three points. But I I want to add something, um, Jordan, to your point. You mentioned the acceleration, Robbie. You know, on, foot on the ball and his ability to accelerate. And I I also think that that final goal doesn't happen without Edward Kiza just accelerating into the box and taking on defenders, showing no fear. Mm -hmm. I, I was pretty impressed with that. Um, and, and just granted, like he got it in there. Something happened. Canardo collected the ball after, you know, it kind of deflected and it did you know, what, what he tried to be the defender didn't quite work. But anyway, Canardo collects the ball and, and Shane, we, you know, Bob Lilly talks about that all the time, making those runs guys need to be in the lanes need to be where they are. Uh, Arturo Adonis, Shane Wheat and Jelani Peters have all scored goals because they they're filling in the you know those channels those places they need to where they need to be the support uh, uh, for the attack you know the attack when the attack's not going well it means guys aren't filling those channels and I think that's why we saw you know Arturo scored his goal uh, you know a couple of weeks back. And then, of course, Jelani with two and we and we, you know, that confidence to take that shot in that situation and just bury it in that corner. Uh, just br what a great finish. Yeah, I think this is a big confidence booster for Shane Wheat, too, because, you know, last last week it was, of course, pretty much his fault on, on the first goal that he had the turnover. So, yeah, talk about some redemption for Shane Wheat. Um, and, you know, a former uh, pit team at, uh, teammate of his, Edward Kiza, in the lineup now. Kiza immediately stepped on, got some good touches in there. He, it, they actually, he made them look easier than they were. Uh, in the first couple of minutes, the ball was kind of juggling to him, and, and he settled them down well. And, um, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how Bob's going to use that now with Dequa, Dane Kelly, and Kiza. I'm, I'm not sure what that rotation is going to look like and who's going to start, but um, it's – it's better. It's a good problem to have more good players and <laughs> than to not. <laughs> Absolutely. And I came through tonight, you know, Dane Kelly's, we finally saw an injury report. First of all, I haven't seen one all year. So, and they've been <laughs> relatively healthy now, but we know, we sort of know that Bob's been keeping Dane under wraps a bit, Dane Kelly, that is, and, and, and playing him for, I mean, it just kind of managing his minutes through the course of this, you know, the heart of this season right now and lower leg. And he didn't even, you know, suit up that he wasn't in the 18. And that's an interesting thing. And then to have that depth, to have Edward Kiza to be able to come off uh, and use him, I think is, is definitely a good thing. Matt, I want to talk to you about the first goal the Hounds gave up. I don't, my viewpoint, I mean, it was a brilliant goal. Yeah, maybe they could close space there, but sometimes you just got to tip your cap, right? Absolutely. Uh, I don't think there was anything cheap about the goal that McGlynn scored for Hartford. I thought it was uh, what we hockey people would call a goal scorer's goal, uh, if you will, uh, or Galazzo, uh, to use the more appropriate vernacular. Uh, Wait seemed like he guessed correctly and did what he mm -hmm. could 
uh, from his perspective to play it correctly. Uh, he just wasn't fast enough. Yeah, I, again, uh, well placed. Really uh, well I thought it was a well hit ball. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, it was. And, and, you know, you talk about earlier, John, about the emotional ebbs and flows in the match. At that point, you know, from a Pittsburgh perspective, you're thinking, uh, because you, know, you saw the Riverhounds in the first half knock on the door again and again and again, but never be able to knock like that, tend not to end well for the team that can't knock the door off its hinges. And it's usually the one chance, you know, like the McGlynn chance that goes the other way that ends up being the one that burns you. Uh, um, the River Hounds, to their credit, uh, trusted their process. And uh, to me, I, I like their response to that goal. You know, I, I didn't see any kind of a major drop off uh, in urgency from an attacking standpoint. You know, the body language of the team, I thought, pretty much stayed the same. And uh, I, I don't know what you or Jordan, you know, saw uh, what, what your take on this is. But to me, John, this River Hounds team tonight was not interested from an attack standpoint in being a finesse team. They came out and they said, let's roll our sleeves up. Let's get our hands dirty. Let's get our noses dirty. Let's get other stuff dirty. You know, there were chances for headers, chances for deflections. You know, this was a team that looked very determined to me to just keep throwing that mud at the wall and hope that eventually something was going to stick. And it did eventually in the person of Russell Cicerone's goal. And Jordan, you talk about Kiza. Kiza very nearly had one of his own near the end off a header. I mean, it, we were this close to being able to say, hey, rookie, welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome, Edward Kiza. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen for him. Uh, it happened for a different pit guy a couple minutes later. But you got to like the way the team responded to the goal and, you know, uh, and, and kind of trusted their process. And I uh, I think that's a sign of maturity. I do. I think it is. And I think it's a sign of a team, a veteran team that's never going to, you know, press the panic button. Um, and speaking of which, Jordan, uh, the, the Hounds came out. It, it, it's, it's pretty much the same thing we've seen the last few weeks. They've got three, three in the back, four, and then Canardo, and then the two. Uh, just your thoughts on the, what they, what they, what they're, doing what they continue to do in terms of uh, their tactical uh, lineup. Before, I'm yeah, sure. it, it mainly did look like the, the three, five, two, but, you know, um, usually five in the back when, when they're moving back defensively, Bob always wants five back. They're always disciplined. Um, so yeah, we're seeing that more so than that four, two, three, one. Um, it's odd because in the past couple of weeks, sometimes it, it would look like that at times. It's, it's strange. I, I can't really explain it. You just have to watch. And, um, you know, sometimes a wing back moves up and then it just looks like a four back. Um, so it, it's, it's very common that wing back yeah. in and then it looks like there's, they, it, what it is, is it's like they're covering, you know, it's mm -hmm. rotation. And so that wing back that's on the weak side usually tucks back in so that their shape is pretty solid. Right. right. And uh, Dixon got the start up top uh, right. beginning of the game, which uh, we haven't seen too much of. And then he ends up finishing the game at that uh, right wing back where we've talked about how um, if you play a four back system, could he be a right back? Or if, if you're playing the 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 three, five, two, he could be the right wing back. Um, so, yeah, it, it was interesting to see him start up top. Um, I, I think Dequa tonight. Uh, he didn't look super composed in the box, um, had some some big touches, uh, didn't didn't really take full advantage of some chances. But uh, Cicerone, as usual, just um, just so consistent. He went in and was a workhorse and found a way to get them a tie, at least at the moment. Yeah, a tie uh, at the moment and then to, to be able to come back. Matt, this team, what do you do? I mean, I'm looking at Robbie Mertz, and, and it looks like the way he subbed everybody in and out, he brought Robbie up a little higher uh, mm -hmm. in that rotation. So in that, we saw Canardo starting up in the kind of above the other central midfielders. When Robbie came in, he went higher, and Canardo dropped a bit. 
and Danny, you know, Griffin. And the, so that three, I mean, just having those three in the lineup at the same time, it's really, really, it, it adds another dimension to this team. As we talked about at the beginning of this um, reaction show, Mertz's ability to, to, to accelerate with the ball, just the thing, some of the things he does, I think, they, they can find they obviously have done it in the past, but find a way that the three of them can complement each other and really can contribute to the playmaking to create a goal up scoring opportunities. Matt, I mean, I just think that this well, I think could be. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that there are a couple of things you can point to. Uh, in a larger sense and point to Tuffy Schellenberger, the owner, and the River Hounds organizationally, there are a couple of things that you can point to here in the 2022 season the, that you can point to and say, okay, this is a committed owner. This is a committed organization to winning. They are prioritizing winning. They are prioritizing finding whatever pieces they need to find and getting this team to the next level. The first major sign we already talked about before the season began, it was Sonny Dane Kelly. The most recent major sign that this team is serious about exercising playoff demons and ending the championship uh, drought, if you want, uh, if you prefer the term, uh, is bringing Robbie Mertz back into the fold. Uh, I think, you know, even though he's not necessarily a name per se, um, uh, and I saw John Morrissey from USL Tactics talking about it a little bit, the what he does and and you know the way that he can be a link between the very experienced and capable midfield that this team has and the notoriously loaded <laughs> forward group that this and even more so with Kiza uh that this team has now um you know he, we've talked about it you know a number of times before earlier in the season this team was leaving goals out on the field. You know, there was still, you know, they, they had that run at the very beginning of the season where they were getting their goals, but for a while, for a long while, something, something was just missing. And I would be willing to bet John and Jordan that Robbie Mertz uh, could very well be that missing thing, if you will, that missing link, that missing piece of the puzzle that could get those two groups to really uh, galvanize and get this team uh, up to the point where we sort of expected them to be from an offensive numbers standpoint uh, at this point of the season and uh, going into the playoffs as well. So, I mean, the, the addition of Mertz, uh, aside from the obvious being an eyebrow raiser and a headline grabber and tremendously exciting news for the club uh, for a, a host of reasons, uh, I agree that this could be huge for them tactically uh if tactically bob lilly ends up playing his cards right well and you see canardo forbes bob talked about he wanted guy I, a couple of years ago i know he had this i had this conversation with him and he looked at robbie as a player who could really take overtake canardo not in the like take you know just supplant him and be that guy and, you know, when Robbie moved on, Danny Griffin sort of started to jump into that role. And you could see that, you know, th there was a match over the last two years, not just Danny Griffin and Robbie Mertz, and now they're back together. And I, I just think that, that that's why I said this is this, – they have the potential to be a very special group moving forward. Uh, there's still a lot, lot can happen, and there's going to be challenges. There's going to be bumps in the road. But the depth, even if, you know, they, they lose a player here or there, maybe an injury or whatever, that this just to have this depth, to be able to start Luke Biasi, Mark Yabara tonight, you got Angelo Kelly Rosales on the bench. You know he can come in if you got a lead late and kind of be that stopper back there. You Maybe you guys got sitting on a yellow card, you know, whatever. Um, but, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's really – I think that, that this is – they have the opportunity to do something very special this year moving forward. And uh, I think it is exciting that Robbie Mertz is part of the picture again. Uh, and so here we go. So the Hounds pick up three points tonight. They are now 10 
I'm sorry, 11, 6, and 4, I believe. That's good for 37 points. They're creeping up, but, you know, the competition is going to be tough in Eastern Conference. I think they just have to kind of stay in there, just keep doing their thing. Uh, four points out of a possible six in the last two road matches. So I think they're in a good position. Now they, go, they come home, they get a match against Tulsa, and then it's, I believe, one road match, and then there's two more home. A big one looming, you know, two or three plus weeks from now against Memphis. I think that's going to be a big match if they can continue to three point build three points in the bag here against Tulsa next week. Three points. I believe the next one is Loudon, or um, I believe it's Loudon, uh, and just keep building those points. Um, then they get to play Memphis. I think that's uh, that's going to be a big match. Jordan, big match, right? Yeah, absolutely. We, we talked about that on the podcast, how there's, there's going to be a stretch there of tough games. Um, but yeah, uh, headed to uh, headed back home to Pittsburgh, July uh, 30th, or is it the 31st is the home game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 30 um, against FC Tulsa, who's sitting outside uh, right now, just 30th. outside of the playoff picture. Um, maybe they'll sneak into a playoff spot. But yeah, I mean, you look at this, uh, the formation, the personnel they have now. Uh, I mean, I say when you get back home, this is a perfect opportunity to start Mertz. Uh, maybe you give Kiza a start. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the, the midfield was obviously a, a strength of the Riverhounds. And now it can be a juggernaut throughout the league with Danny Griffin, Robbie Mertz, Kenny Forbes. I don't think you have much of a better trio than that in the USL. So yeah, I, honestly, yeah. I think he's, he's playing it. I mean, if you just look at his level of play, Robbie's at all USL, right. Type level with Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We know what Griffin's doing. We know it's just sort of maybe on, on a, steady and not too flashy but we know what he means to this team and if, you can't deny Canardo Forbes and his what he does and what he means to this team so I think that I know we've been going on uh, probably longer about all of three in the, the central midfield but but it is an exciting thing to see um Matt let's wrap things up Matt what do you who's your man in the match you gotta give it one guy Well, I think uh, well, I think for man of the match, um, I'm going to go with um, with Russell Cicerone. and I say that not just for his equalizer. I say that because he's been seemingly the most consistent hounds forward uh, or goal scorer, as it were, uh, this season, and he sort of epitomized the way the River Hounds. Uh, approach this match and the way they came out of it uh they you know they they stuck to it um you know the, the passion never dropped the energy level even in extreme heat again never waned uh cicerone is this guy who just goes out there and for 90 minutes or however many minutes every week uh the guy just keeps chopping wood and uh, when he is chopping wood, you love it when the tree finally comes down. And it did uh, on the very impressive header goal that brought the Riverhounds level and uh, set the stage for Shane Wheat's uh, dramatic uh, sequence at the very end of that match. Um, you know, uh, what more can you say, John? Uh, it, it's cliche to say in sports that good teams find a way to win. But that's exactly what we saw tonight. We saw the river hounds go out and make the statement, you know, Hey, we're still a good team and we're going to find a way to win just as sure as this bad team that we're facing. That's been struggling all year long is going to concoct a way actually a uh, big morale boosting result for them uh, at home. So uh, man of the match, uh, Russell Cicerone, but uh you could go a lot of ways on man of the match, I think, John, because this was a character win, and Cicerone was one of a number of people who were involved in that. Jordan, yeah, I agree with Pop Chalk that it, it was it was really a character win. There's definitely a few guys that stepped up, and you could easily hand it to them. Personally, if I was the coach, just with with Shane Weed accidentally having that turnover last week, I would give it to him to to give him that confidence booster. Like, hey, buddy, you got a game winner. Here's the game ball. Um, you know, you're a starter for us. Uh, you know, week in and week out, we know how well you can play. 
So uh, not not that Shane Wheat Wheat has been bad, um, and that uh, he needs like this some sort of pick me up. But um, yeah, I, I would give it to him. But by all means, Ciceroni. Uh, you could even say Mertz and Kiza, just first time playing for the team this season. You could have very well given it to them and say, hey, great minutes for us in that second half. Uh, but yeah, overall, just a great team win. Sure. And I'll, I'll go with you, Jordan, just because of the fact that it's going to be the headlining. It's the game winner. It's wheat. Uh, the wonder wheat, wonder wheat bread uh, is <laughs> Twitter handle goes. Uh, he goes by it. Yeah. So I would say yeah, definitely Shane Wheat, my man of the match coming through, giving the, you know, we go from maybe potentially a disappointing draw to three points. Um, and, you know, you'll never, ever hear me uh knock or I, I just I can't say enough about Russell Cicerone I think he continues to be the the motor the engine uh it, it Dixon up the top that was interesting and I, I you know having him up there but that was almost like when he first came here that's what we thought he would be we thought mm -hmm. he would be because we watched him in Hartford we watched him in Rochester kind of in that spot and you know Bob Bob always finds ways to utilize all his players so effectively um so it was interesting to see Dixon up top and then moving and being kind of that versatile guy. But yeah, absolutely. Shane Wheat, the uh, man of the match, uh, looking forward to getting uh, a little bit more in depth uh, with the player, with the uh, takeaways and player grades. I'll probably have that posted on Pittsburgh soccer now on Monday morning. So look for that Pittsburgh soccer fans. And again, we're looking at the hounds playing every Saturday now until the end of August. So no midweek games, nothing like that. Uh, and so next week it's FC Tulsa at Highmark Stadium. The last time they played, it was a four to three shootout. I know the Hounds got a big lead and then kind of gave up a few goals. Um, so looking forward to that. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we, we would love having you back. We got to bring you back into the circulation. We got high school um, coming up again. And I know that's we're going to be bringing you back on board for to help with that whenever you can. Um, Jordan. Thank you. And I know you and uh, soccer rabbi Mark Goodman. Mark Goodman will be making his return uh, to our coverage uh, next week. I know both of you plan to be at Highmark Stadium. Uh, and again, thanks tonight for your uh, for your for your insights and thoughts. Appreciate it. No problem. The storm didn't didn't get me too bad, but <laughs> we all survived. We all had if we didn't have Wi-Fi, we had regular TV to watch on 22 The Point. Um, but yeah, yeah we got through it. this. The storm didn't blow everything away in, in my lawn or my deck. Everything's still intact. Um, I did have to go out and pick some things up, but uh, yeah, everything's in the same, same place. <laughs> all right. Thanks guys. Have a great night. Thank you all for listening. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, John. All right. Have a good night.